first degree murder. The reason for that is under the law, if someone conspires to commit a felony and someone is killed during that, you are responsible for that murder. The idea being, let's say you and several friends decide to rob a school. During that, someone is shot and killed. Even if you didn't pull the trigger, you are considered responsible for the reason this whole situation has happened. That's what makes this case interesting because the only people hurt in this instance were the people committing the crime. They were killed. So even though the person who pulled the trigger was defending himself, should the other criminal, the getaway driver, be charged with murder? Very interested about the debate around this, and that's why I want to pass the question on to you. What do you guys think? Does it make sense? Do you think it's overreaching? Also, do you agree or disagree with me when it came to the homeowner defending his home? I'd love to know your thoughts here because while I have my opinion, I do not believe that I am infallible. Everyone's got their own thoughts and I want to know yours. And then let's talk about a few political things. Remember this week when I talked about the Senate, specifically Senate Republicans voting to reverse the landmark FCC privacy? <laughs> it removed that, in my opinion, stripped away consumer choice and really hurt the free market. You need to understand why and go back and watch some of the but the one hope was that people were going to call their representatives, the House would go, you know what, people are going to want this privacy rule to be put into place, let's not strip it. Well, House Republicans also voted to gut the rule, and now it's going to be sent off to Donald Trump. So there you have it, ISPs won't even have to ask you if it's okay if they track what you're doing online and then they sell that information. And of course, the question of, well, why would they do this? Uh, there, there is the argument some people have that they think that this is innovation stifling, it hurts the corporations, the government shouldn't be involved. And then there's also uh, all this. All, all of this money sent to people, the House and the Senate, from the communications industry. Maybe that had something to do with it. And then let's talk about Donald Trump. Trump, of course, making news yesterday when he signed a long-promised executive order, one that essentially nullified Barack Obama's climate change initiative. And this was cheered on and hated by the groups that you'd expect. Obama's clean power plan would have reportedly used hundreds of coal-fired plants, frozen construction of new plants, and replaced them with vast new wind and solar farms. So obviously the winners there are these corporations, and the people that work for those corporations are losers under this Trump executive order. You have the companies buying those solar and wind farms. The people who would work there, and environmentalists just in general being angry about this. Saying it's not just about jobs, you have to think about the plan. There's also a lot more to it. Consider that a surface-level explanation. I'll link to a bunch of sources about it so you can boost your own knowledge on the subject. At this time, I don't personally feel that I'm equipped enough on this subject to do a deep dive. The last thing I want to do is close my video. But the last thing I want to talk about, it's just a pet peeve of mine. There's this continually repeated lie slash misrepresentation of the situation out there. And it's just annoying because people that see the tweets or just read the headlines and go, oh yeah, that's true. That's Donald Trump and the New York Times. I'm not even getting to the whole thing, Donald Trump saying the family New York Times, even though his presidency is a piece of shit. Not talking about that. It's just this continuation of this narrative that he started November 13th. And it's repeated multiple times, including today. On November 13th, he tweeted, the New York Times sent a letter to the subscribers apologizing for their bad coverage of me. I wonder if it will change. Doubt it. And today tweeted, remember when the failing New York Times apologized to its subscribers right after the election because their coverage was so wrong? Now worse. He 